Meanwhile, Alabama is one million percent a statement team in 2023. J.D. Uh, joins us now to talk about that. J.D. Piquel. Uh, thank you, J.D. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, that, that's a lot. To, that, that's a statement I didn't that's a headline. I didn't think I'd really be reading uh, during the Nick Saban era. It sounds like somebody doubted that uh, this was uh, going to be all of that. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Explain what it all means. Yeah, Paul, well, first pleasure to be on with you. I think when we talk about Alabama, we're talking about them in a light that we haven't really talked about them in some years. I mean, rewind back to last year, we were all not just penciling in, but sharpening in. It would be Alabama, Ohio State in the title game in L.A., and Alabama's not even making the playoff. And so a lot of people, and this is something we've seen a couple of times throughout the Nick Saban regime, is he'll have a down year that everyone says, you know what, the game's passed him by. Bama's no longer the Bama of old, and then right after that happens, he wins a national title. And so I think for Alabama, the statement they're trying to make is, hey, we're, we're still here. We're still Bama. If you want to forget about us, you know, that's, that's on you, but we're still Bama. We're still here to make a statement. And I think to count them out this coming season would, would be very, very unwise. Well, J.D., what do you like about them the most? I think when you look at the way they've recruited, there is tons of talent on this roster still. I mean, they have nobody on campus that's been outside of a top two class since 2019, which is everybody that's on campus right now. And a lot of people are going to look to the quarterback position and what they don't know about that. I like the way that Bama is going to approach offensively this coming season. I think it's going to be bully ball. I think it's going to be back to the old Alabama we've seen previously where they try and control the line of scrimmage. And they still have pieces to get that done. So will it look different than it has you know, last year? Absolutely, with the new offensive coordinator, Tommy Reese. But I 1 million percent believe Alabama is going to still be a force in college football. And people that want to overlook them are going to be sorry. Yeah, and But I wonder, though, uh, as we have this conversation, uh, you know, they finished – last three years one two and five but it's 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 the direction that seems to be troubling people uh no one's doubting nick saban uh, we all know what he's capable but we all know we also know what he had last year on his roster and that that gives people a little bit of pause so try to square the two with us and answer the question he why he couldn't win with the best offensive and the best defensive player in the country, why should he win now with an unknown at quarterback and all new coordinators? Well, going back to last year to address that, just because they, they didn't get it done doesn't mean they weren't still capable. I mean, that, that team last year, and a lot of people are going to talk about it, they were two plays away from being 8-4. and four. They were also two plays away from being 12-0 and 0 and locking up a spot in the college football playoff before even playing in the SEC title game. And so last year's team kind of wrote its own story. But when you look at just the roster itself, there's absolutely the firepower there to get it done. And so I think the, the motivated Alabama team is a little bit scary for people. And I just keep going back to the roster. A lot of it is unproven, for sure. A lot of unproven production. I think they're somewhere in the 120s in terms of you know, returning production for this coming season. But at Alabama, the way they've recruited, new isn't necessarily bad for the Crimson Tide. At a lot of schools across the country, if it's unproven, you just assume, okay, well, that's going to be a, a getting up to speed process. I don't think that's going to be necessarily the case in, in Tuscaloosa. So you expecting a big statement from Alabama. Who else is uh, high on your list? I think Texas has to be a statement team this year. I mean, there, there's always been that, yeah, but – built in with Steve Sarkeesian, with Quinn Ewers. It's, yeah, the first year, it's, it's not really his team. He's trying to get the culture right. And then Quinn Ewers were making the excuse, well, it's his first year being the starting quarterback. And so for Texas, going into year three, it's kind of like, all right, you, you've had the, the year three culture now. Now you've got a quarterback who knows what he's doing. You've kind of built to this. Year three is like, okay, make a statement. Show me that Texas is going to be a team that we have to deal with when we talk about the big boys in college football. Because – well, I think the reason why Texas gets so much heat is you know, there's the brand and there's, you know, the, the attention that comes with being at Texas. But Texas invests so much into their football program that at this point in time, it's like we got to see some ROI now. We, we've put all we've been told to put into. We've put in the resources. We've got the facilities. We've got the recruiting. Now we want to get something out of it. And so for year three, I think it's very fair to expect Texas to, to be one of those teams that needs to make a statement. Also, look at Tennessee. I think a lot of people from last season are expecting them to potentially take a step back because – no more Hennon Hooker, no more Jalen Hyatt. I think Joe Milton's going to be a stud. I think Josh Heupel's offense is going to continue to roll. And I think a lot of people in Knoxville are expecting Tennessee to be a team that makes a statement like, yeah, last year was great, but th this is now the new cruising altitude for us here at Tennessee. This, this is now who we are. 
JD, one other question here. Every time I talk to an expert, and I, I say that with, with, with affection, they, they talk about Michigan and Ohio State. We had Phil Steele on yesterday. He's got both uh, in, in his top four or five. What about Penn State? When, when is James Franklin going to finally uh, break that door down? You know, I think they have a little bit more of a window than just this year. I think this is a great opportunity for them to make a statement this coming season. But all of your chips with Penn State being that team that beats an Ohio State or beats a Michigan, they're probably in the Drew Aller basket. And we haven't seen Drew Aller play meaningful minutes yet in a college football game. We've seen him in mop-up duty. We've seen him come in momentarily during you know, an injury for Sean Clifford. But I think we still have to wait and see exactly what Drew Aller is going to be before we can speak definitively about Penn State. But, I mean, the talent they have on that roster with Nick Singleton and Katron Allen, Abdul Carter, like you go down the list here, there's a lot of pieces there at Penn State that are young. So you'd like to see them be one of Michigan or Ohio State this coming season. But if they don't get it done, I think... Finally, as we, as we, we, we will, uh, undoubtedly, as media days start any day now... Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.